Hi guys, my name is Andrew. Today we're gonna to be going over the Color MFA Display by Licky. We're gonna be going over the features and installing it on the Mark IV R32. So come along guys and join me on the ride. So guys, this cluster by Litkey has been on my radar for many years now. This actually is a cluster that I've been wanting to do. I just haven't gotten around to doing it and it takes a while for these to actually uh, be made and kind of just get your hands on them. So the main reason why I went about getting this cluster is one, it replaces the OEM LCD MFA display that is in the R32, but you could also upgrade it to a color MFA display that is kind of more common, I would say in the Mark 7s. Um, it just really modernizes the cluster and makes it look a lot newer than what was currently or previously in the car. For me, um, the actual OEM cluster a uh, little display started to fade over time. This is very common and this is actually due to a little soldering point inside the cluster that just kind of weakens over time and it will start to fade that LCD screen. So your best option is to get the cluster and replace it with either the OEM replacement or like I have done here, the color MFA display. I highly recommend doing it. So for now, let's go ahead and dive a little bit more into the details here and you guys can kind of see how much this costs and what you can expect from this cluster. So guys, when you purchase the cluster by Licky, there are a few free options you can get and then a few additional upgrades you can purchase if you'd like to say, make your cluster just a little bit more extra. Uh, well, so starting off with the free options. These free options include a needle sweep. You can also get a color needle upgrade. You can get an accurate coolant temperature sensor. You also can get a welcome message and then you can also get an accurate or a cruise control mod, I should call it. These are the free options that you can get. Libkey or uh, Matt will reach out to you basically and tell you if you'd like to add them and they're just added for free, no additional charge. The additional charges you can get if you'd like for this cluster starts off first with a full upgrade of an LED background for the cluster. So you can basically change the background lighting on the cluster to anything you guys would like. The second option you can do for purchasing is upgrading the needles on the cluster. So say right now I have the R32 uh, Mark IV needles. If I wanted to upgrade to say the Mark VII needles, I can do that. Pretty cool option. And the last option you guys can do is you can upgrade the actual face of the cluster. So I have the R32 cluster, but say if you have a GTI cluster and you wanna have the brush aluminum trim like the R32 clusters have, you guys can upgrade that on your clusters. Everything's an additional charge for those. So reach out to Matt at Lickie. He will tell you what those additional charges are for upgrading your clusters. So guys, now that we've gone over those kind of just brief intros on what this cluster can actually do and how much it costs, let's go ahead, get this installed and actually take the car out on the road and show you guys some of these features. To begin this install guys, we're gonna show you how to remove the cluster first. The first thing you wanna do is to disconnect the battery. Once that's disconnected, you have to remove this plastic trim. This will allow you to get access to two T20 torques. You can remove these torques and that will then allow you to move the cluster inside the dash. Next, you will want to remove the two connectors. Start on the left hand side, press in the safety lock on the top and pull the latch. This will move the connector latch up and start to push the connector out. Once this is out, move to the second latch in the rear and repeat the same process. Remember when doing this to take your time so you do not damage the connector or destroy the latches. Now that we're in the car, the first thing that you have to do with your cluster, uh, there is a pin right here or this um, little plug. You have to plug in a USB cable into here. That's very important because these clusters will have upgrades and updates that you'll need to do. So it's important that you guys plug this in and run that cable down to underneath the dash so you can always use it and grab a laptop, plug it in and upgrade your cluster. To install this cluster now, it's literally the exact opposite of what it was to remove the cluster. So let's go ahead, get this in the car and show you guys that process. Okay 
right guys, we are in the R32 now going out for a drive. Let's show you guys kind of how this cluster works and some of the functionalities of it. So to access the cluster, it's super simple. On the windshield wiper stock underneath, there's a reset button. You hit that reset button, that will bring up the main menu for the MFA cluster. You guys can see the screen is up right now. The nice part about this screen you guys can actually go into different functions here. So the first area we're gonna look at is the measurement section. So the measurement section has some cool data. This data is one and data two slots, kind of give you just overviews of the car. The difference between them are when they are actually erased. One is erased uh, immediately, I think it's like an hour or two after the car is turned off. The other one holds the data for a while. So you can see this one actually in data two holds the data for a very long time. Uh, the next part is the summary section, which I find really cool. This section actually goes over a lot of active data that's going on in the car right now. So you guys can just see kind of the torque that I'm using, um, how fast I'm going, the RPNs the car is at, kind of really nice little data features that you guys can just look at. The next feature we're gonna go over is an oil level sensor. Now this thing I wish I had in my car, but I don't. This is actually meant for, um, on the bottom of the oil pan, you could actually put a sensor in and the car can actually read what your oil level is. Uh, it's a super cool function. I wish that I actually had it in the R32. Maybe I'll do that when I go for a big turbo on this car. But um, for now, I don't have it. So this is just kind of how it's laid out. The other section, these last two, we're gonna actually get to a specific spot that I can actually show you guys how these function, but this torque and also this acceleration function are super cool. The torque function basically is a rolling dyno for the R32, while the acceleration function will do a zero to 60 for the car so you can actually see how fast the car um, will go. Um, let's go now over and do this torque curve. I'm on a straightaway so we can actually do this. I'm gonna go down to second gear and I gotta get down to a thousand RPMs to do this. Let's go. So you guys can see how that torque curve worked and how it showed up. Kind of cool overall. You can see the max torque is 240 foot pounds of torque. Total horsepower put out is 243 horsepower. Not too bad for an R32. Um, it's a lot more than actually I thought the car would put out. Let's show you guys also what an acceleration run would look like in this car. I actually have to go and find a spot that we can do this because I'm on a main road and I have people behind me. So um, once we get to a spot, I'll do it standstill and I'll show you guys the acceleration run. noises. Alright guys, so for the acceleration run here, what you do is simple. You go into the acceleration mode, you go down to zero, and you just punch it. So there you guys go. That is your zero to 60 uh, functionality in the car. Didn't do it that fast. Uh, you guys can see it's for uh, 7.9 seconds, but not going to try to break a record here. Just trying to show you guys how the function works. So pretty cool functionality. So the next section we're gonna talk about is this graph section. So this graph section is, I think, pretty cool. It kind of gives you live readout data for the car. So when you go into this section, you have to go down to this watch. These are all different components that you can change colors for the graph so you can read what you want to actually follow. But when you go to watch, it gives you a live data readout of what's going on in the car. So you guys can see how the RPMs are reacting. Um, pretty stable right now. You can see the throttle response. Um, and just kind of get a nice little readout of how the car is acting. So I like that if you're having any issues with the car, it's a nice little function just to check out. The next section we're gonna talk about is just kind of the settings section. This section is pretty simple, just kind of goes over um, the different functions you can change, whether like you put a speed limit in the car, you could put different kind of warnings on the car, um, you can change the design of the cluster, what functions you wanna show up. Nice little functionality, it's, you know, just, kind of nice and to play through it. If you guys get this cluster, I would just play through it and see kind of how you want to let everything out. Um, that would be the settings section. The next section, I love this actually section um, for this car, it's the diagnostic section. So for the diagnostic section, that will actually go into your car and read any codes that you have currently in the car. So you guys have a check engine light, you want to read it, you guys can figure out what that check engine light is being thrown from just by going into this diagnostic section. It's actually kind of very similar to a VADCOM, um, but it just built into the cluster, which is 
super cool and a super awesome function that I personally love and one of the main reasons I actually got the cluster in the first place. Um, you also have a messaging section which can show you guys different kind of messages. So like if you have any issues, I don't. This just comes up saying everything is okay in my car. And what else do we have here? You guys have your system setting and services. So for this functionality, you guys have, we're just gonna go down here to your services. These will kind of just say when you have your next services available for the car. So if say you wanna put an oil change service in the cluster, it will tell you when you have to do your next oil change or something like that. Nice little functionality, just so you don't have to leave the sticker up on the windshield. And you guys will never forget when you have to do an oil change. Um, so yeah, those are just kind of the basic functionalities of the cluster. Wow, we're going on some bumpy back roads here. But um, I wanted to show you guys kind of those functions, how they worked, and what my overall thoughts were for the cluster. I personally love this, and we'll go into a little bit more details of why I like this cluster once we get back to the garage. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed this review and install of the Cluster by Wiki. We all really enjoyed this process, and honestly, this cluster is such a great upgrade from the OEM cluster. If you guys like this video, as always, go down below, consider subscribing and like this video. We would really appreciate it. It just helps with the YouTube algorithm and more people will be able to see this video and maybe buy this cluster for their R32. Just a quick overview of what personally I think about this cluster. I really love the bang for buck value you get out of this cluster. Overall, I love the features that you get in this cluster. And I also just love the user interface of it. It's super nice function wise, and it's just really straightforward. It adds a bunch of new features that the Mark IV never came with and just kind of brings the Mark IV R32 into the modern era. So if you guys are really considering replacing that screen, I would highly recommend getting this cluster uh, from LitKey. If you guys have any other questions, I have linked his Facebook group in the description and down below. And I've also linked the user manual for this cluster so you guys can check it out if you have any other questions. Until next time, guys, my name's Andrew. And peace out, guys. If you would like to see a similar video, go check out my videos, guys, over here. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel.